Welcome back to Tabletop Titans and another Titan Tactics. Today we're here to discuss the poster boys of Warhammer 40k, the Space Marines, who we just had the brand new index for 10th edition be released. I want to give a special shout out to the folks over at Art of War who we've collaborated with on this video, learning from their unique insight on how to play the game. While today's video is going to take a look at the overall concept of Space Marines, how they play, and going to help you hopefully decide if you want to play them, definitely take a look at Art of War over on YouTube, where they can take a much deeper dive in how to play the game and play it better. In 10th edition, Space Marines take their position as very flexible flexible damage dealers. Uh, they're going to be a ton of fun to play, having a huge number of different data sheets, and are going to excel at taking down single targets with a ton of damage and decent durability. Let's dive on and take a look at the four big aspects that really define this. The new Space Brain Index has a staggering number of data sheets, and this means a number of different things. It means they're going to have lots of different tools for different situations, and there's going to be a ton of different deep cuts to pick up and adapt to. Space Brains, unlike Tyranids, who we recently looked at, uh, specialize in taking lots of buffs and stacking them onto a single unit. Lots of different specialized characters, and things like Oath of Moment really incentivize this. This comes together to create a faction that is all about dealing damage to specific targets with the perfect weapon for the job. This is something that a lot of other codexes might suffer with because they don't have as many weapon or data sheet choices, but Space Brains have it all. And ultimately, this faction is relatively durable. They have a lot of high toughness, decent armor, and invulnerable saves on their profiles, making them difficult to remove. Let's take each of these four defining elements and break them down. This book has a ton of deep cuts. This means that once again, you're gonna be able to specialize for each and every occasion and build an overall balanced force. Uh, you're going to be able to take characters like Lysander and make your Terminators much tougher. Here, of course, we have Torgaradon if you're going up against vehicles and, and, and monsters, and really going to be able to, to flesh that out. Now, the game is going to change and probably change very rapidly, and so a faction like this that has a ton of different data sheets is going to be able to adjust accordingly and prepare for the way that the game evolves. Space Marines love big squads, both for themselves and for their opponents. Because you're able to attach these characters, it really incentivizes having big squads that benefit from a single character being attached to them. There's only a couple exceptions, of course, where you can add multiple characters. And vice versa, because of things like Oath of Moment that gives full reels to hit and wound against a single target, they really excel at going into enemies with singular big targets. So this is something they're really going to excel at. If you're going up against someone that has multiple small units, they're going to have a bit of a tougher time, although you can kind of shore up these weaknesses with things like Gilliman and access to a number of other different rerolls. Speaking of rerolls, let's talk about their damage output. Oh, at the moment, of course, give those rerolls, but there's many, many twin link profiles in here, uh, and there's also characters that give you a certain amount of rerolls or devastating wounds that will really work well with the fact that you are rerolling everything that you want to. And of course, connects to the amazing deep profiles. Some armies, we just discussed Tyranids recently, are gonna struggle finding options into big monsters and vehicles with high toughness. This is not the case with Space Marines, who have a number of different solutions. Things like Eradicators, who actually have a relatively low strength are going to still excel because of the fact that they can get full reels, hit, wound, and damage against the targets that they want, shoring up any of those potential weaknesses, while other things such as the Gladiator Lancer just have ridiculously high strength plus enough rerolls to make it work. So in either case, you're going to be set for a given scenario. All things considered, this army is relatively durable. We put the ish there because it is going to seem less durable in some ways. We have the Blade Guard here, who have of course lost their 2 plus uh, armor save, so if they're standing out in the open, they are live to get shot down, so you're gonna have to be, be wary of that, but all things considered, the army is tough. You still have Terminators with a two plus armor save, now a four plus invulnerable save, uh, and so you can be relatively durable across your whole army, rather than having certain units be very durable. Last but not least, there's a few ways to have lone operatives or give a lone operative-like abilities with infiltrators or scouts that's going to make your backfield particularly difficult for someone to dig out. So we've talked about the high level, about the four elements of this faction that really makes them up, but what are the specifics of it? What are some of the key units that we think are going to appear again and again in the early parts of this edition? Well, first of all, a lot of these buffs and rerolls and abilities center around things like captains, who can offer CP reductions to really make them work and give extra value to a particular unit. So captains of all sorts are going to be very, very interesting. Accompanying them, we of course have the Terminators, who have increased in toughness, in some cases wounds, and have been given a 4 plus invulnerable save. So Terminators, possibly taking the role of uh, where Blade Guard used to be, very, very tough units, gonna be fun to play. 
Desolation Marines are still quite strong, not as busted as they were at the end of 9th, but still an amazing unit uh, due to the fact that they have the big super crack profile that's going to hit quite hard, and they have their secondary Castellan launchers that can take out smaller squads of Gene Stilicolt or Eldari, or any of these pesky other things that are trying to hide out of line of sight. Eradicators mentioned a few times for just being so good at killing vehicles if you can deliver them within range. It is down from 24 to 18, so we'll talk about some solutions for that in a bit. I absolutely adore infiltrators in the new edition. They still maintain their ability to keep people outside of 12 when you deep strike and gonna make for amazing backfield objective holders. Storm speeders get new life breathed into them due to the fact that core is gone, so they can really benefit from the absolute plethora of rerolls available for this army, in particular Oath of the Moment. They're fast, they hit hard, and they actually are kind of difficult to remove. In a similar vein, the Gladiators, as well as the Repulsors, hit very, very hard. They can do it at a decent range and are also extremely tough to remove. So these really exemplify some of the things the Space Marines are best at. Now this book is absolutely chock full of different combos, but let's talk about just a couple of our favorites. First of all, I wanna talk about this combo involving Infiltrators and a Librarian in Phobos armor. Infiltrators, as we mentioned, make it so you can't land within 12 of them if you're arriving from reserves. And then you combine this with the Phobos Librarian, who makes it so they're not able to be shot at beyond 12. So you can't land within 12, you can't shoot them beyond 12, you're forced to actually move up physically across the board and reach them, either fighting them in melee or shooting them at very, very close range. Uh, again, a great just backfield objective holder that's very difficult to dig out. On the other hand, if you're trying to be aggressive towards your opponent, take a look at Uriel and the Bully Boys. Uh, this Space Marine Captain has the worst haircut in all of 40k, but an amazing ability that allows you to deep strike another unit within your army. Now, Eradicators, as we mentioned, are great at killing monsters and vehicles, but have an inherent problem in the fact that they're only an 18-inch range on very slow-moving bodies. However, if you can deep strike them, of course, that gets around the main problem, and it sets up an absolutely amazing delivery platform for these monsters. And there you have it. Space Marines really specialize at killing in this edition. They're going to have lots of different ways of doing it. They're going to benefit from many rerolls. You're going to want to build big squads and go against other big squads. And ultimately, you're going to have access to many, many different data sheets and units and builds. It's going to be a ton of fun to play. It's going to be flexible as the edition changes. Honestly, it's a great time to be playing Space Marines and getting into Space Marines. Let us know in the comments below what you are most excited about for Space Marines. We'd love to hear from you. And of course, I want to give a special shout out to the folks over at Art of War. Thank you so much for collaborating with, with us and sharing some of your insights on how the game works. And again, check out Art of War over on YouTube. They do some amazing work and are honestly some of the best players in the world. That's going to do it for me. I'll catch you all next time on the tabletop. Bye-bye.